A few weeks ago Elon Musk said he would send the first unmanned spacecraft to the Red Planet. The next major land transfer will occur at the end of 2026. This is a genius where the two planets are closest. This alignment drastically reduces the distance. Making it a spaceship, but fuel efficient. It is usually a trip that lasts six to nine months. But with under stress V3, this time can be reduced. With the recent landing of Artemis 2 and 3, we will be able to see the stress arriving on Mars before landing astronauts on the moon. Which would be at least curious. But until that big day arrives, SpaceX has many obstacles to overcome. With 25 launches scheduled for the year 2025, it can give the company the necessary gas to finally leave the operational stress behind. In this video, we'll address three obstacles. Before SpaceX can dream of sending the first ships to the Red Planet, one of the greatest achievements of the space industry in recent years was undoubtedly achieved by SpaceX. If recovering the Falcon 9's fuselage wasn't enough, they also recovered the fuselage from the stress pipe. But this time in a completely different way. As of the date of this video, there have been six flights of the under stress, and without a doubt in a hurry. Achieved very subjective. Just the fact of getting a rocket more powerful than the Saturn V off the ground. It's already something incredible. And despite many achievements, this is just the beginning. What we've seen so far is just a scratch of the true potential of under stress. It's a spaceship, not just a rocket, and it's the centerpiece of Elon Musk's grand vision. To create an interplanetary transport system, capable of building, for example, an entire city on Mars. In the next test flights, 7, 8 and 9, they will have to overcome the first major hurdle, orbit. Well, let's divide the conquest of orbit into three main aspects. Orbital launch, cargo delivery, and in-orbit reacquisition. Although the understress had made multiple flights in 2024. In the sail it does not reach the height and speed sufficient for a complete and stable orbit. For example, imagine you are on top of a mountain and throws an object horizontally. Gravity makes one lick in a curve when hitting the ground. Now your object is launched at sufficient speeds to reach the correct height. Its curved trajectory will correspond to the curve at the height of the Earth. Thus, it will fall continuously without touching the ground, entering the famous orbital flight. The faster your object is launched, the faster it will have a trajectory moving away from Earth. But gravity is spinning it to slow down, change its trajectory and pull it back towards Earth. That is, an elliptical orbit. If it is launched at a speed even greater than orbit, it can reach the escape trajectory. Where Earth's gravity will no longer be enough to hold it back. Orbit is a complicated thing and takes into account many factors. As it is one of the ship's engines for an orbital insertion, the atmospheric race and the defeat of the Earth. But simply put, most ships maintain an elliptical trajectory. As they help with fuel consumption. A good analogy is a roller coaster. To wrap up this topic, let's take the Dragon capsule. It maintains an elliptical orbit to dock with the space station. That maintains a nearly circular orbit. A suborbital flight in the shape of a parabola, this ensures that even if everything collapses, in flight systems, the Starship will inevitably crash in a predictable location. Now, imagine Starship achieving full orbital flight and then suffering a total failure. We would have a gigantic structure of air swirling out of control around the Earth. And that wouldn't be good at all. As we can see, dirty air is extremely resistant to re-entry. And Starship would hardly disintegrate in the atmosphere. It already causes panic when he wanders around there. Imagine a 50-meter ship. This flight path, although not what we would like to see. It is necessary, at least for now. And if this is done successfully, the next big challenge will be. Launch a payload into space and not a banana. In traditional rockets, the payload is protected by a cowl. Which may not be disposable, depending on the company. After the rockets leave the atmosphere, they are ejected. After that, the rocket's upper stage continues on its way. But Starship won't work like that. In its first version, the ship will have something more practical to handle launches. Of the Starlink satellites. Instead of opening a large cargo hatch, the stage will have a small, narrow exit. In its cargo compartment, in the gigantic dispenser. 
SpaceX will be able to make this work because it knows exactly what the load will be. Of the first street ship releases, the Starlink satellites were ideally shaped. Long, wide, and thin, which allows the space of the ship to be designed to measure. To release them one at a time. The internal mechanics are simple, while the stage at which it is baked, the next one is automatically poised for the next release. But it is important to make it clear that the ship will have more than one version to meet other types of charge. If in the next flight 7, 8, or 9, the stage manages to reach the time to have a load, the next big pair will be used even more. Carry out large scale orbital refueling, which will be essential for missions between planetary and the future. The process will involve multiple releases, and we don't yet know how, and in fact, if it occurs, First scenario, several Starship tankers supply Mega Depot in orbit, and then when? When the time comes the lunar Starship just stops by there, refuels and continues on its way. A true vital postman. In the second scenario the lunar Starship maintains one orbit, while several Starships are thickened and supply the main ship. But as you know, there are numbers of engineering and chemistry problems to be solved. Coupling spacecraft in orbit is not something new. Once orbital refueling is mastered, SpaceX will have to do one less mission. Unmanned demonstration to the moon. To this end, the company has been secretly developing the lunar starship. This variant eliminates the flaps, heat shield and includes reinforced landing legs. Getting to the moon is relatively simple if orbital refueling is mastered, but posing on the ground is a colossal challenge. It enters the atmosphere at an angle of approximately 45 degrees decelerates with the rest at atmospheric and Asakutama new Baraflop before a controlled vertical landing. The others on the moon have no atmosphere and mean that the lunar starship cannot use this method. Passwords the heat shield SpaceX will bet on a new system of proportion. By placing these engines on the top of the ship, it would prevent a character from opening at the time of landing, and thus there would be a risk of the ship tipping over. Whether SpaceX can pose something as large and cylindrical as the Starship will be a challenge. And as history has already proven, even with modern technologies, posing on the moon is incredibly complicated. Therefore the first attempt to post a lunar Starship will be centripetal, minimizing the risks. The goal of the Starship has always been to reach Mars, and perhaps along the way, the that SpaceX was bringing together other projects. According to the latest plans released by Musk and the leaks we sometimes witness. In Starbase, it appears that the Starship designed for the Moon and the version for Mars may. Being developed at the same time without us even realizing it. The great advantage of these prototypes that are currently being produced to operate. In low orbit they go up similar to those that will be used to land on Mars. The main difference, legs, and maybe a different heat shield. After refueling in orbit the Starship equipped with propulsive legs will follow a Mars. When it comes to SpaceX, it's exactly like that. Try, fail, learn and try again. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in and that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button and if you want to support our channel and if you want to be up to date you can become an exclusive member so click on our perks through the link the description below thanks to watching and see you next time.